Where can you find an ectopic right superior parathyroid or ectopic superior parathyroid ones? I'm Dr. Bob Aclaron from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. I'm going to present to you an interesting case of a 57 year old athletic woman who's been having fatigue, memory loss, poor sleep, anxiety issues, uh, acid reflux, constipation, uh, high blood pressure, palpitations, and uh, uh, increased urination. Symptoms that are very nonspecific. All of us in our 50s have some of these constellation of symptoms. And she had been having high calcium levels, slightly elevated calcium levels for years, which was ignored, and until she finally pushed and pushed and pushed, until one of her doctors agreed to check her parathyroid hormone level, which showed it to be elevated. Calcium was 10.5, slightly above the normal of 10.2, but her PTH was over 100, and normal was less than 60, 65, in fact. Her vitamin D was normal at 45, so that wasn't the reason. And she had an ultrasound on the outside that was read as a right inferior parathyroid. So when you look at an ultrasound, and this is an ultrasound I did in my office, this is an ultrasound in this orientation. So you're seeing the parathyroid in this orientation rather than that orientation, right? With the head being up here in this direction, going in that direction, and feet pointing in obviously in that direction, in this ultrasound. This is the skin layer the muscle la layer above the thyroid. This is the thyroid gland right there. And you can see the parathyroid. Parathyroids appear dark on ultrasound and have a little bit of a white shadow following them. Because this parathyroid was located in the lower portion of the thyroid, just behind the lower portion, it was thought to be the inferior parathyroid, right? And so during surgery, when you look for an inferior parathyroid, generally speaking, inferior parathyroids are superficial to the vocal cord nerve, right? So they're superficial and superior parathyroids are deep. And so thinking that this was an inferior parathyroid, the search would have been superficial to the nerve. And well, during surgery, we found it to be otherwise. She underwent a minimally invasive parathyroidectomy under local anesthesia. She was breathing on her own. Um, she had a little bit of sedation, so she was sleepy and not feeling or remembering anything. Um, and lo and behold, the right inferior parathyroid was actually a very normal parathyroid. I had to find the vocal cord nerve and just deep to it, immediately underneath the inferior parathyroid and the nerve was the superior parathyroid. So the superior parathyroid, instead of being higher up in the neck, was actually lower in the neck and right behind the inferior parathyroid. And so sometimes when you do assess the MIBI for these patients, because you can't see the depth of these tumors, you can mistake an upper parathyroid versus a lower parathyroid and you can get into trouble, right? So she had the lower parathyroid stay in place, looked at and not disturbed, the nerve identified and pre preserved and protected. And then the larger inferior parathyroid was removed a PTH level was drawn before removal of the parathyroid, which came back at 134. And then at 5, 10, and 15 minutes, PTH levels were drawn, which showed the level to decline to 51, 43, and 38. So it came down and plateaued in a lower number, which told us the remaining three parathyroid glands were functioning normally. They were not overactive, overproducing hormones, and so it could, did not need to be disturbed or looked at. Um, confirmed the success of the surgery right at the time of surgery, right? And then at uh, one month and 12 months post-surgery, we checked labs again, and you can see the calcium came down from 9.5, I mean, 10.5 to 9.5. PTH dropped from 100 to 19 at one month. Vitamin D was a little low. And then at 12 months, the calcium was 9.7, PTH was 27, and vitamin D very much normalized again. So everything balanced out and remained in that balanced fashion, right? This is the video of the surgery after the nerve was identified and the parathyroid was being addressed. This patient, you can see the head is this way and the feet pointing that way, right? Opposite of the ultrasound in terms of visuals. Um, so, this is now cauterizing the blood vessel that is feeding the parathyroid and the parathyroid is being released and now being removed. It is a fairly large parathyroid, just like you saw in ultrasound, it was a large one. And 
Now, before surgery, I always try to do a quality of life survey, a parathyroid specific quality of life survey. On these surveys, when the patient has never had a symptoms, the number is four. And when the symptoms are more frequent, the number is lower. So the higher you get on this survey, the more normal you're feeling, the less symptoms you have. So her score was 56 before surgery. She had a number of symptoms that were really debilitating and having them most of the time or, uh, or always, all right? And then at six weeks after surgery, you see that her number goes up significantly to 80. And a great majority of the symptoms are either never there or hardly ever. The only symptom that was still there some of the times was palpitations. At two years, the number was 78. So very close to that number of 80 that she had at six weeks. So symptoms got better at six weeks and maintained uh, at the two year mark. So she did well and her symptoms continue to remain really good. Um, the moral of the story is that when you have hyperparathyroidism, you really need to have an expert surgeon treat you so that not only they can find the correct parathyroid, the, do the most minimally invasive surgery, meaning surgery that is least invasive under the surface, not going around and looking at everything all over the place because that's maximally invasive. Someone who's gonna confirm the success of the procedure with PTH testing during the surgery, so you have confidence that everything was done properly, and that they know where these ectopic glands can hide, right? And they're not misled by imaging studies into thinking a normal parathyroid that's down here was the abnormal one and is taken out by mistake. If you find this video helpful, like it, subscribe to our channel, and let us know what questions you have, what types of videos would be helpful to you on this journey of getting your hyperparathyroidism treated. Be well.